So that's our cost of the actual, I guess, kind of physical thing in space, but there's a whole other component of actually the operation, the ground segment of these missions. That's right. Um, and if you look at uh, something like the Hubble Space Telescope, it cost about $5 billion yeah. to launch. And since then, it's cost at least $15 billion to yeah. service and maintain and operate. And that's generally the case for most spacecraft. Yeah. Once it's launched and working in space, your expenditure has only just started. That's right. Uh, the actual, over the, especially the ones that last a long time, the expenditure over the lifetime of these things can be much bigger than the launch costs. Exactly. And so you want to factor this in when you're designing it. If you design something that can be operated cheaply, that'll save you a lot more money That's right. than skimping on the launch costs. And so there's a bunch of things we need to worry about. We need to be with the launch pad, communications, mission control, and data analysis. So where do you launch these things from? So, I mean, I kind of noticed one thing immediately. Uh, is there seems to be some tendencies of their locations, right? That's right. So these are some of the major launch yeah. sites like uh, Cape Canaveral and uh, Baikonur like for the Russians and the two main Chinese launch pads, Tanegashima for the Japanese, Kuru. for the Europeans. And uh, there are many other places, yeah. like things have been launched from Australia yep. and New Zealand and other places, but these are the main ones where most things are launched from. And what do you, what do you want? So you're going to have to build a fairly big facility there. Yep. It's going to be a lot of money, right? Yep. So this is uh, the European Space Agency's launch site <laughs> at Kourou in uh, French Guyana. Yep. And you, uh, I mean, you've got the launch pads, obviously, you need the transporters to transport the rockets to them. You, have, you actually have the buildings to store some of these rockets. You've got lightning protection, you've got tracks. You need Road, fuel, you need yeah. radar. Um, all these things cost money. Yeah. And that's so if you're gonna launch something, you might as well go to an existing launch pad. Someone's already built the road, someone's already yeah. built the radar, someone's already built the fuel tanks. Yeah. It's gonna be a lot cheaper. There's a lot of infrastructure new. that goes into it. That's right. And here's the Japanese launch site at Tanagashima, um, and similar sorts of infrastructure there. Uh, now one thing you need is that your launch has got to be somewhere where if your spacecraft explodes, you're not going to kill people. Yeah, I mean, that, that's kind of one of the things you notice in all of those things is they're A, kind of remote. There's no, you know, suburbs next to it. And they were all near water, right? It doesn't have to be near water. Like the Russian ones are not near that's water. True. The main Chinese one is not near water. But what you do want is to be able to yes. launch in a direction where if your spacecraft crashes down, you're not going to hit somebody. Exactly. So normally they're on coasts. Yes. And that means you only launch in some directions. Like from Kennedy Space Center, you can launch anywhere in these sort of directions, yep. basically east. Yes. But if you launch due south, you might hit Miami and west, you'd hit Donald Tampa Trump's. Bit. Yeah, exactly. So the, the idea is when you're launching, if something does go wrong, which it does, when it comes down, that debris is not going to land on a populated area. Yes, so if it's Hanagashima, they can only launch a particular window, so they have to clear all the fishing boats yes. out the, the sea area around every time they launch. Russia or Kazakhstan, really, with Baikonur, there's not a lot of people around when they launch as well. That's right. So you want to pick somewhere that's desolate yep. um, and uh, launch over an ocean. What also matters is that by launching in the correct direction, you can gain a bit of that precious delta V. That's right. So. Because the Earth is spinning, if you launch to the east, you're getting about a 400 meter per second, 420 meter per second advantage in delta V because you're going with the Earth's rotation. So you get a little bit of extra delta V for free, essentially. That's right. And because it's exponential in delta V, that's, that's right. definitely worth it. It's pretty small compared to the total amount you need, but every bit helps. So that's, per so that's kind of why we see essentially every rocket launching into the east. Yes, if you can. Another issue, though, is if you're launching from like the Cape, which is 25 degrees north, yep. you can't launch into an equatorial orbit. Okay. So here we're going to launch, um, and you're going to see it take off. And that it launched due east in the simulation. Yep. But you'll see it's now in orbit because it's launched from 25 degrees uh, north. It's an inclination of 25 degrees. So when we see things like the, the International Space Station, which is an inclination of 51 or so degrees, it's because Baikonur is at 51 degrees. That's right. So if you're going to launch something into a high inclination orbit, like low, uh, most low Earth spy yeah. satellites or communication satellites, then it doesn't really matter where you launch it from. Uh, you can launch it from anywhere which yeah. has latitude less than the inclination you want. Yep. And typically people use an inclination of like 50 or 60 degrees, so it covers most of the world's population, That's right. as we talked about earlier. And so you can always launch from the equation and launch north to get the inclination you want. <laughs> um, but if you want to launch into an equatorial orbit, you, you can't do yeah. it. You can do it from somewhere else, but you have to find a lot of fuel to change its direction. That's right. And this is mostly an issue for geostationary orbits. Okay. Because geostationary orbits are by definition above the Earth's equator. Yep. And so if you launch from anywhere not on the equator, that's going to cost you because you have to fire your rocket in your inclined orbit and then steer it round into the correct orbit. 
So launching east gets you about an extra 0.4 kilometers per second, um, but you can't launch into an equatorial orbit unless you're on the equator. Yeah. Um, and that costs you about an extra one to two kilometers per second. So ideally, you really want to find something exactly on the equator. Or pretty close. The closer you get, the smaller yeah, yeah. that delta V is. That's right, yeah. This is why the European Space Agency launches from French Guyana, not from right. France. Yep. Uh, quite apart from there being more <laughs> cities to be destroyed by falling spacecraft. And if you launch east from France, you're going over Germany, which <laughs> the Germans might not like very much. Um, but it's also near the equator, so it saves them. And yeah, one to two kilometers a second is definitely not to be sneezed That's at. That's right. However, there's a cost to all that, yes. that uh, if you put it in some remote tropical location... You have to get everything there. You have to get the people there. You then need to build infrastructure for the people who operate these things. It propagates through quite a lot. Yeah, so most launch pads are not where the rockets are built. That's right. So for the Cape, uh, people are, or uh, Baikonur, yeah. things are built thousands of kilometers exactly. away and shipped on barges or trucks to, yep. and then assembled there. The one exception to this is a SpaceX's Boca Chica yes. launch pad, where they've actually got the factory that builds the rockets right next door, well, safe distance away, but fairly close to the actual launch pad. And That's that in right. principle could save a lot of money. That's also the very southernmost yes. point of the US, so minimizing this as much as possible. Exactly.